I declare this the Bachelor of Science in Nursing commencement at Delaware Technical Community College. Please remain standing and please silence your phones. Our ceremony begins with a national anthem sung by Jason Aguila, who is a computer technologies lab specialist at the college, a veteran of the Delaware National Guard, and an officer on our Alumni Association Board. The national anthem will be followed by the invocation by Chaplain Werner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let us pray. Our creator and sustainer, here tonight we celebrated a first for Dell Tech, the first graduating class of Bachelor of Science in Nursing. We were glad of the establishment of the program and we were proud of this first class blazing the trail for more to follow. They have persevered in their classes, they have selected a vocation that is both vital to our communities and a dynamic career path. On the front lines of taking care of people and their health, we thank you for them. May they enjoy this achievement in their lives. May they continue to grow in their knowledge and skills. We're grateful to have your presence here to celebrate with us. Amen. You may be seated. I'm Cornelia Johnson, Vice President and Campus Director of the Terry Campus, and I'm honored to welcome you to this historic ceremony. Our graduates are the stars of the evening, and graduates, we are so proud of you. So excited for the opportunities that your education will bring, and so thankful for the great contributions that you will continue to make. It is my pleasure to now introduce the members of the dais. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Dr. Mark Brainerd, college president. Scott Green, chair of the board. Robert Haggerty, trustee. Michael Hare, trustee. Lolita Lopez, trustee. Bill Bush, former trustee and current Delaware State Representative for District 29. The Honor Honorable Bethany Hall Long, Lieutenant Governor. Chaplain Andrew Warner, Delaware National Guard, Nancy Broadhurst, President of the Board of the College-Wide Alumni Association, Justina Sapna, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Melissa Rates, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Christine Gillen, Vice President for the Strategic Communication and Marketing, Dr. Valencia Lynn Beatty, Vice President for Human Resources, my fellow Vice Presidents and Campus Directors, Dr. Laura Johnson, George Campus, 
Dr. Kathy Jam Jambier, Stanton Campus, Dr. Bobby Barron's Owens Campus. Campus Deans of Instruction, Dr. Kathy Friel, John Buckley, Christy Moriarty. Campus Deans of Student Affairs, Dr. Jeff Rose, Dr. Sharon Mossman, Jennifer Pyers, and Gail Cherrier. The Bachelor of Science in Nursing Leadership Team, Dr. Joanne Baker, Instructional Director, Dr. Kathy Sokola, Program Coordinator, Joshua Barnes, Program Coordinator, and Dr. Kelly Davis, Program Coordinator. College Administrators, Dr. Rich Kralovich, Vice President and Campus Vice President for Information and Instructional Technology, Jerry McNesby, Vice President for Finance, Paul Morris, Associate Vice President for Workforce Development and Community Education, Dr. Judy Seipel, Vice President for Institutional Effectiveness and Development, Brian Shirey, General Counsel, Ted Winstead, Director of Public Safety, faculty, staff, and other administrators who have come to be a part of this special occasion, please stand and let's give them all an applause. Congratulations, BSN class of 2018. Front and center, you are the reason why here, we are here tonight, our graduates. Graduates, please stand and let us applaud you. <laughs> Maybe see that. As you know, life is a journey filled with lessons, hardships, heartaches, joys, celebrations, and special moments that will ultimately lead us to our destinations. Your destination tonight is this commencement ceremony. The road here was not, only what, was not always smooth. In fact, throughout your travels, many of you encountered many challenges. Some of these challenges tested your courage, strengths, weaknesses, and even your faith. In order to follow your path to graduation, you overcame these obstacles. Upon reflection, you may think that some of these obstacles were really a blessing in disguise, only you weren't aware that they were at the time. I commend each of you for achieving your goal, seeing it through, and walking across this stage tonight. Orrin Hatch once said, there's a good reason they called these ceremonies commencement exercises, Graduation is not the end, it is the beginning. As nurses, you are already making an impact on our community, our state, and our nation. I know that you will take your new credentials, continue to grow and develop, and make a difference in the lives of all those that you serve and work alongside of. I'm honored now to introduce Delaware Tech's president. Dr. Mark Brainerd had has had distinguished careers in business and in government. He is a leader who leads by example. He values people, and he creates environments where creativity and collaboration can flourish. He is deeply committed to Delaware Tech, and above all, to its students. I think President Brainerd is proud of his law degree, but I think he is prouder of his criminal justice associate degree from the place that gave him his start. Please welcome a most distinguished alumnus of this great college, our president, Mark Brainerd. Thank you, Cornelia, and thank you all for being here. This is a big night, not just for you, but for us. It's a very historic evening. Uh, but before we get into the program, we have one piece of business that the Board of Trustees asked me to help with. Um, as you heard earlier, we have a board member who was elected to the Delaware General Assembly, former board member, Mr. Bush. And uh, as is tradition, our board of trustees adopted an, a resolution of, of appreciation. And I won't read the whole thing, but I think there are a couple of paragraphs here that I think deserve to be read because they reflect upon Bill's service to the college. Uh, the resolution talks about the fact that he's a lifelong resident of Kent County and obviously of Delaware. He served a number of honorable positions throughout his tenure and his career of, in public service. 
But uh, it also goes into and says, whereas Bill's unwavering commitment to the mission of Delaware Tech is shared by his wife, Carrie, who together have supported the college through generous donations of their time and financial resources. In addition to Bill's leadership at the Terry campus, Bill and Carrie have established the Chocolate Lovers 5K Run Walk, the proceeds of which have provided scholarships and other financial assistance to students at Terry. They've also served as joint chairs of the Terry campus's major annual fundraiser, the Gourmet Gala, which also raises scholarship funds. Bill's tenure as a trustee began on June 11, 2010, and continued through two gubernatorial administrations. He served in numerous positions of responsibility while a trustee, including as chair of the personnel committee, a member of the executive committee, and a member of the presidential search committee, and provided critical leadership of the selection of the college's fifth president. He also was quite supportive and very, very vocal supporter of the creation of the BSN program, and that's why we wanted him to come back this evening. So the board wanted uh, Bill to please come forward. Good evening. I hope you're all as excited as we are to celebrate this first annual, first ever commencement ceremony for Delaware Tech's Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. All of us have used many different words in anticipation to describe this evening. Standard terms you've heard, such as exciting, landmark occasion, pride, and the list goes on and on. But the most popular and I think the most important way to describe this evening is historic. And we've all been saying that as well. It was one of our board members, Mr. John Myrano, who could not be here tonight but wanted to be, who first used that word when the Board of Trustees approved the creation of this program just a few short years ago. At the time, Mr. Myrano was our senior board member. He had served on our Board of Trustees for over 40 years, from the earliest days of the college's history. And he spoke up that night and said that with the new BSN program, quote, we are making history. We had never had a bachelor's degree at Delaware Tech and had never really considered creating one. But it was an extremely important action to take because it demonstrated that this college this leadership, this administration, our faculty and staff, were all committed to doing anything and everything we needed to do to fulfill our mission. Someone once said, quote, you either hate change enough to lose or hate losing enough to change. We do change and we drive change here at the community college. And as tonight demonstrates, we're going to keep carrying out our mission to support Delaware's workforce. Now, a few years ago, all of the critical care health care facilities in this state, Bay Health, Christiana Care, BB, AI DuPont, Nanticoke, the list goes on. They all desperately needed and continue to need nurses with the bachelor level credential. This Bachelor of Science in Nursing program, as the old saying goes, is like the canary in the coal mine. It's a major demonstration that your community college will continue to listen to our business partners, anticipate needs in our local community, and look at new ways, sometimes radically new ways, to support the workforce of our state. This program demonstrates how committed we are, how creative and nimble we will have to be and how far we're willing to go to meet the challenges that lie ahead. For 50 years, we provided opportunities for Delawareans to earn associate degrees, certificates, and diplomas, all traditional academic credentials needed to pursue high quality careers in our state. But that's not enough anymore. As you all know, 
things are changing, and they're changing at a pretty rapid pace. If the healthcare sector tells us that there are additional needs in allied health that require new credentials, we'll respond and we'll provide them. If our local high schools tell us that even more partnerships are needed to expand college and career opportunities for their students, we'll provide them. If middle schools struggle to provide quality work-based learning opportunities to make sure every Delaware student is both college and career ready, we'll provide them. In short, we will continue to do the work you deserve and expect from Delaware Technical Community College. Graduates, as you leave here, we hope that you will remember two things. First, please remember Mr. Myrano's reference to making history. That history is really about being the first graduating class from this program. Now, if you think about it, our culture is really focused on firsts. When you run a race, you want to finish first. Most of us tend to remember who finished first in our high school and college classes. And some of you are probably thinking, after yesterday, I wonder if the Eagles will finish first. <laughs> Even our own state, a number of years ago, used to use the reference to being first to distinguish ourselves from other states. Some of you might remember uh, Delaware. It's good being first. Clearly, being first is important. So we thank you for having that drive to be first. And thank you for being part of this college's history because you truly are a first. Second, always remember that you are receiving your bachelor's degree from an institution and a program that's known throughout this state as producing the best nurses. The numbers show it and the record is there. You're part of the best. So not only are you part of a historic first class, you are continuing a short but very rich tradition of excellence and quality. In addition to the statistics, all of us, all of your faculty, everyone here at Delaware Tech, we've been approached by professionals in the field, hospital presidents, medical doctors, patients, and even other nurses constantly telling us how our ADNs and RNs are great, they're prepared, and they're exceeding the demands of the profession. Now we'll have that same community of leaders telling us how superior our BSN nurses are and how ready you are to lead the profession in Delaware as well. So as a graduate, you will always be connected to Delaware Tech but you'll also be co connected to that reputation and expectation of excellence and quality. So we hope you leave here proud and ready to lead as we all know you will. So congratulations and best wishes to each and every one of you for continued success. And now I'd like to introduce a very special person. It's a classmate of yours, Cassie Reed. Cassie, can you join us at the dais to introduce our commencement speaker? Like many of you, Cassie is a dedicated student and nurse, but she's also the mother of three sons. Cassie graduated from Delaware Tech's associate degree program in May 2017 and immediately began taking BSN general education courses and was accepted into the RN to BSN program in August 2017. Cassie works full-time at BB Healthcare, part-time at the Pediatric and Adolescent Center, and she's one of those students who has demonstrated grit and perseverance to complete the RN to BSN program at an accelerated rate, all while working in the field, managing family and personal demands, and despite a number of unexpected life events along the way, she successfully completed the program. So please welcome Cassie Reed. On January 17, 2017, Bethany Hall Long was sworn into um, as Delaware's 26th Lieutenant Governor. She served in the Delaware Legislature from 2002 to 2017, first as a representative and then as a senator. 
While a member of the General Assembly, she served as a chair of the Health and Social Services Committee, where her efforts were aimed at ensuring a stronger, healthier Delaware by combating addiction, focusing on a stronger mental health system, fighting cancer, and addressing health inequities in the state. She also served as a member of the Capital Budget Bond Committee, where she focused on building Delaware's infrastructure, modernizing our schools, repairing our highways, and protecting our environment and open space. In addition, her research as a University of Delaware nursing faculty member for almost two decades has made her a nationally recognized health scientist. So at this time, I would like to introduce our commencement speaker, Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long. Thank you. That is awesome, too. No better introduction than from um, a new graduate. Uh, and I have to share with you, uh, the last person who introduced me is, came and interned in my office. I don't think I can maybe meet the pay that you're going to make uh, as that new bachelor's prepared nurse, but uh, thank you. And it is really historic. And I want to say to uh, President Brainerd and the Board of Trustees and your outgoing board member, Representative Bush, and to the nursing faculty. If I could have the nursing faculty on stage and in the audience, please stand. Please stand, those of you who led to this evening. Let's give them a round of applause. Because you had to uh, think out of the box, right? So thank you, and to Joanne and them. And when I found out, I said, wow, this is gonna be really uh, intimate conversation. With 21, I don't think I've ever had this lovely small number where we could actually have a conversation. And don't worry to folks who know, I know it is a weeknight. I know you've got work tomorrow. How many of you here graduating tonight work in the morning? I knew it. Show those hands higher, please. Look at that dedication. How many work in the evening or night tomorrow? See that? So let's a round of applause. But really to the board. To take to take that risk, and so as I, you know, was coming here, you could have prepared remarks, and I have I have a few of those comments and things, but I really just want to have a conversation because it is pioneering, it is landmark, and it is historic. And I'm wearing my hat both as a university professor and a scientist, and as your lieutenant governor. I want to just give some brief comments. And so for the parents and grandparents and family members who are here, I'm going to focus a little more, if you don't mind, on them. But before I do, I am not a foolish person. It takes a village, and it takes people missing dinners, not having laundry washed, skipping some groceries, having some mix-ups on schedules to support to get the men and women here. So, if you are a family member that's here supporting them, will you stand? And we want to applaud you before we start tonight, because without you, they wouldn't succeed. And don't be shy. Thank you. We appreciate you. And how many children miss their mom or dad? Let me see that show of the hands. You miss them some nights, right? Oh, in the back. Yay, look at that, big guys, little guys, all sizes, right? And that's what nursing is about. We're human touch. And you know this already because you're in the you know pipeline from uh, already practicing, but it is so important. And so tonight, this is the beginning still on that fork in the road in your journey. I am biased. Dr. Kathy Socola was one of my PhD students. Where is she hiding on this stage? I am very biased with her and Joanne. I want all of you to continue. I know that you're thinking, oh my gosh, not even dare bring that up. But education is really a life's journey. And I want you to not see things as a closed opportunity. So I just have like four or five little comments and remarks and we're gonna participate. But I know folks are here tonight to really see you come across the stage and to celebrate. Folks, everyone, what profession is number one in the Gallup poll that Americans respect and love? Nursing. It is incredible. So I never introduce myself as a politician <laughs> or even a public servant. I'm a nurse, and I am so proud of that. Like many of you, we had opportunities to go to medicine. We had opportunities to go in business. We had the opportunity to go in another career, and other faculty who are here tonight who represent those disciplines, thank you for being educators as well. But we're special. 
And you know why we're special? How many of you work with persons at the end of life? There is nothing more um, humbling than being with someone at the end of their life. How many of you have the excitement, which is the path I first chose as a nurse, working in labor and delivery, and Nick, you? How many of you in the beginning part of life are pediatrics, OB, pediatrics, right? And so we had these precious moments. And we have those crazy moments where we want to go in the linen closet at 3 a.m. because we're short-staffed and we don't have enough help. But you've learned the how to cope here, right? Had they done a good job of transitioning from an associate's level to looking at leadership? Because now, in your new capacity as bachelor's prepared nurses tonight, people are going to look for you to apply evidence and practice. People are going to look to you to be the leaders in the unit. And the one thing I'm so fearful that will happen to you that sometimes happens to persons, they don't follow their passion. And what is your why? So I'm going to, you know, do something a little different here for a second. Turn to the person to your left and your right and tell them what is your passion, what is your why, and what gets you up in the morning. Do it. Don't be afraid to talk. You have no problem probably talking in class, do they? Do they have any problem talking in class? All right, the families are laughing because they know nurses are never quiet. And we always like control. And we always are in time management. Okay, we're not going to let you say them out loud because they may be unique. And, you know, your dog barking in the morning does not count as what wakes you up and what gives you passion in the morning. Like, what is your why, right? But understanding that drive and what makes you want to do what you absolutely want to do. And I know for myself, it was really about trying to take care of persons. And so as I traveled with my husband, who was in the military, um, you know, I had the chance to work with the mentally ill and the homeless veterans and those who were really struggling and who were really in need. And I'm going to give you a secret. Did I just kill your mic? Stand still and hold the mic. Okay, I can't move. Um, I got into policy interests and politics because I was late to class. Have any of you been late to class? People don't all know this. It's a little secret that a few folks back here know about me. I, you know, was committed to getting my master's, which y'all are going to do next. And I was committed to working with the mentally ill and the homeless in Charleston, South Carolina. And I had this wretched professor who, because I was five minutes late to class, I got the last assignment. And you know, in the graduate program, guess what was the last assignment? Nursing and politics. Like, oh my gosh, who wants politics, right? And I share that story with you because it became my life. So you may not get that first job after your bachelor's degree, you may have to hang in and do things a little differently, but take that half glass full mentality and turn that, which I suspect some of you've had to do on some lonely nights and long nights and worried about passing and I doing too I care. Can't move. All right. Well, did I kill this? He says, I have no problem in talking loud. Are we okay? He always turns the remote up. So last night with the Eagles game, that TV was loud. Ground. And the other thing you have to be as nurses is flexible. When your equipment doesn't work, oh, this is even better because now I can go mobile and my staff will freak out because I won't be using my, any of my speech. Um, but really, and I promise to keep it short, you're going to give me a warning here on my time, right? Um, you know, really you have to be flexible, right? So when things don't work, other than the ventilator, what do we do? We unplug it, right? Um, that was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. All right. But in sincerity, following that passion, knowing your why, understanding, you know, things are just going to happen sometimes in life, and taking those moments of opportunity. So what I did is I learned from that, and I chose, I challenged myself, I ran for office. Do you think I won the first time I ran? No, I lost. And so sometimes we have failure. And so along your journey, you may not get the first job that you want, you may not get your second, and I just realized I probably need to move back because they are videotaping this. Um, that you truly, you know, want to learn from those experiences. And it's like our own Joe Biden said. It's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get back up. 
Some of you I know are all from Kent County, but anybody here from Sussex County? Oh, we got a few of y'all. That's great. Anybody from the beach area? Oh, you are. Okay, hence my name, Bethany from Bethany. Anybody surf better than me? I can surf a little. And I talk about that because life, you know, we cannot control the waves, right? But what can we control? How you will ride those waves in life. And those dots will connect on that passion and why. You know, Steve Jobs, other great entrepreneurs, you know, talk about connecting the, the dots. And it doesn't always happen easily. So again, some little lessons for me, knowing that passion, following that why always, learning from those failures and those hiccups that happen in life. It's going to happen. And, you know, also always having an open mind, right? Always having an open mind to what's going to happen. Because sometimes you don't always necessarily succeed. And so thinking with your boss, thinking with your programs, and as a nurse, we know a little thing about critical thinking, care plans, right? Do things go linear? No. What happens? You walk on the unit, you go into the prison, you go into the school where you're working, and what you think is going to be a normal day isn't. But you learn how to cope. And so part of today is celebrating with your family, with your friends, with your faculty, this historic moment. I know our governor and others, he's aware that I'm here, they're having a function not far away, and was very honored to know that Mark and others here, President Brainerd, had, had the vision to begin to look at Delaware Tech, and you are entrepreneurs, you are pioneers. I understand that there's 21 of you here, but did I get the memo correct that there are 200 more in this class? What is the actual number? 230. 230 people are going to follow you. Let's give a round of applause to that. 230 people. That is like amazing. That is amazing. An amazing number. And I could sit here and talk a while about different work and policy efforts. But at this new level, you're still going to be giving that expert clinical care at the bedside, but role modeling, bringing in the evidence base, working on programs, working on grants, seeing the big community picture. And hopefully some of you will help us as we direct policy in the state. And so I want you to celebrate, to continue on that trajectory, and know that myself and others are rooting for you. We want you to succeed, and we want tonight with your families to be a night of accomplishment and with faculty. And so, again, when things seem tough, think about uh, great uh, flight navigators, uh, Wright brothers, you know, when you think about flying, anybody fly here recently? I have yeah, a few of you. I have a nephew who flew here from San Diego who happens to be here, Dr. Justin Long, who's going to be flying out tonight. He came in for a family um, issue. And when he takes off, I want you to think about life. When you fly, is the wind behind you or in front of you in a plane? Anybody engineers in here? You take off into the wind. So you're going to have moments where you're going to be flying in the wind. But I can tell you as wonderfully educated new nurses with your bachelor's degree, you will succeed, whether it's in research, whether it's in the clinical bit side, whether it's as an educator or an administrator, and we applaud you. So I have to end with a quote, um, and I recognize my time is up, and I wish I could stay forever with you. But know that my office door is always open, and everyone on this stage, I think, knows how to reach me. And uh, I want you to be so proud in this moment and to challenge yourselves to the next level. And so I, one of my most favorite quotes are, risk more than others think is safe, care more than others think is wise, dream more. I want you to really dream more than people think is practical, and expect more than others think is possible. So on that note, we offer congratulations on this historic moment to you, ladies and gentlemen, in this pioneer program, so you can call yourselves pioneers. Congratulations, best wishes. I will turn this back to our MC. And maybe you have the magic voice that works with that microphone. I'm going to try that one over there. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hall Long, for your very inspiring words. At Delaware Tech, we recognize the various levels of academic distinction based on the cumulative grade point average of our students. The white cords that they have around their shoulders are for those graduating cum laude, which means that they achieved a grade point average of 3.25 to 3.49. The silver cords are for those graduating magna cum laude, achieving a grade point average of 3.5 to 3.79. The gold cords are for those graduating summa cum laude with highest honors, who achieved a grade point average of 3.8 to 4.0. And red, white, and blue honor cords recognize student veterans. At this time, I'd like to ask our student veteran who is a member of tonight's graduating class and anyone in the audience who has served or is currently serving in the armed forces to please stand so that we can recognize you and thank you for your service. I will now present the candidates for graduation. At this time, members of the class of 2018, please stand. Mr. Green, I present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science. Thank you. So what do you say we make this thing legal? <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of Delaware, I hereby confer upon these duly authenticated students the degree of Bachelor of Science, together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Delaware Tech graduates, you may now change your tassels from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, Delaware Tech's first class of bachelor's degree graduates. First, we have Cassie Reed. Emily Baptiste. Cheryl Butler Williamson. Elizabeth Butterly.
Christina Collins. Kimberly Cooper. Elizabeth Cody. Lashana Flynn. <laughs> Madeline Gilbert. Tina Gland. Eric Granby. <laughs> Stephanie Huerta. Miranda Lee. <laughs> Alexandra Louis Jean. Danielle Masterson. <laughs> Billy Satterfield.
Patty Seward. Renee Smallwood. Nicole Tui. Tammy Walker. Courtney Ward. Congratulations, graduates. And now to welcome you as members of the Alumni Association, the president of the board for the college-wide Alumni Association, Nancy Broadhurst. Good evening. With the authority vested in me by the Constitution and bylaws of the Delaware Technical Community College Alumni Association, it is my honor and privilege to welcome back many of our Associate Degree of Science alumni and to induct our new graduates who join us tonight as Bachelors of Science in Nursing alumni. As members of the Alumni Association, you have the rights, privileges, and responsibilities that pertain thereto. Congratulations. Congratulations again. We're very, very proud of all of you. As we come to the end of this commencement, And we are part of your credentials. We are part of you. So please come back with your successes with your Delaware family. We look forward to hearing from all of you as you continue to learn, advance, and contribute to the field of and Elvis. In that spirit. <laughs> of remaining in touch and staying together. We invite everyone to a reception in the back of the room right after the ceremony. So thank you all again for making time to be here. Uh, and now Chaplain Werner will conclude the ceremony with the benediction. Almighty, as this chapter closes, a new chapter is beginning for these graduates. We pray for your blessing on them in the days and years ahead. May they continue to work hard and create doors of opportunity. 
Their continual growth will help them as individuals and also help us as a community and a state. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 